Yo will help uh, to admit them. Right. Thank you, Yo. Today is the co host. All right. So, okay. So, let's start our sessions today. Okay. So, can you see, right, my screen? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, as you know, this course is KM3170 zero three right three credit hour courses on control engineering or in malay ke jurutran kawalan right so my name is uh, let me introduce myself my name chua billy all right yeah okay so if you have uh, any questions you can just whatsapp me or in other matters maybe official things you may also email me right okay that would be uh, the first part, right? And mainly today's uh, what we would go through is the introductions to control engineering for so-called mechanical engineers, right? As you know, today's the difference or the gaps between maybe mechanicals or maybe electricals, electronics, uh, engineers are getting smaller and smaller, right? Everyone's Due to the internet, everyone's have uh, obtained their skill sets through uh, continuous learning, right? To widen up, okay, their their skill set. Okay, this is important, such that whenever we communicate, especially when doing a certain design, right? The design itself may not only depends on one engineer. For example, mechanical engineer, we we may not able to design the whole things and to operate it nowadays, okay, as a mechanical engineer, okay. As we know, industrial revolutions 4.0, it involve uh, not only mechanical part, also the, say, the electrical, the electronics, as well as now the internet, okay, the software part, right. So they, they are integrated in, into uh, one single products together and due to that itself we may also need to know some little bit of all this uh, information so that it allows us to easily communicate okay between not only mechanical but also the electrical so it's very important for us to have this common understanding okay so that when we design we know what are the important uh, considerations that have been taken okay or should be taken by the other side okay um when they they ask certain information we also know what we should provide them with right so first of all i would like to just pick one what is control engineering right so it can be as simple as two buttons okay you just press the red buttons or the maybe the yeah the not not lifted one okay maybe a purple color buttons okay to turn on or turn off a certain uh, machines okay so this one would, would probably is uh, yeah heat exchangers right so here you can see that these buttons will become our input okay a very direct input okay i press a button that would be the user input to operate or to give an instructions to a machines right and these machines we call it as an interconnected component so internally they may have uh, maybe uh, Wave, okay, electronically uh, control wave, okay, motors or whatever it is, okay. So they have components inside, okay. At the same time, nowadays we would like to properly control, okay, a certain system, okay, with certain so-called automate automations or also maybe intelligence, right? So in that case, we would also include some uh, components in the control that we say as a feedback system. Okay, meaning to say this feedback system is basically a sensor, right? So these are the terms that is being used in the control, right? So when they say feedback is basically referring to sensors, okay? Input may be referring to buttons, okay? Or maybe nowadays uh, it can be controlled through uh, smartphone, right? Apps, so the input would be in, in terms of uh, a software now, right? So buttons may be a, type, a little bit of a mechanical side, okay? 
push, push pin and so on, right? So the inputs can be various, right? So these are the common technical terms that has been uh, widely used okay, to describe this field of control engineering. Okay? So all these things, when we combine them together, we would like to actually achieve a desired output. Okay, we want these machines to do certain things. Okay, for example, maybe this is a heat exchanger. Okay, where you want to control a certain temperature, right? So you have a temperature, uh, a thermometer, okay, sensors to, to get the feedback, and then we continuously tune, okay, or maybe through an automations, okay some uh, intelligence behind it okay nowadays it can be relying on uh, software right but uh, for industry we still very much relying on uh, electronics and electrical okay to do this so-called automations okay to control it right so this is uh, what we describe uh, for these courses okay we have input we have a process that we would like to do okay this process may con, uh, consist of components and feedback systems, okay, to achieve our desired output, okay. So this is what we would want to do or control, right? And this describe what we are going to learn in this uh, semester, right? So very straightforward: input, output, and process, okay. And later on, you will see that uh, this diagram is a very simple form of what we call as block diagram right okay so i guess uh, i have described more than enough on why it is important so the control system uh, just to to control uh, the input to in order to achieve the output right so in order to achieve the output itself okay what you need to understand now is that there is a lagged response, okay, or maybe there is a disturbance during the process and the environment, okay. So sometimes the temperature is very cold, especially in the four seasons a country. You may have winter, you may have summers, okay. So all this will will affect the the whole uh, process or the control or the machines, okay. So this control system will have to respond to all these uh, things, okay. Whenever you press a button, the motor or uh, the the machines, okay, may not be responding immediately. That's why we call it as a lagged response, okay, lagged response. So this is where these control systems plays a role, okay. To understand the characteristics of all this lagged and disturbance, okay, uh, and how we should uh, control them so that even though there is lagged response. There are disturbance we still able to achieve what we would like to achieve as the output okay so this includes the use of uh, design strategies okay in order to improve the manufacturing process efficiencies use of energies etc all right so the purpose of control systems includes gain remote controls uh, convenience of uh, input form probably uh, in the form of uh, apps okay in the form of yeah you have a certain convenience of changing the temperatures thermostat okay just like in the maybe in the hotel rooms you have the the temperature thermostat right to to change the temperature okay then also a compensations of uh, disturbance okay for example so you may want to uh, control an antenna positions okay but there is a a, a disturbance okay you have a strong wind okay but when you turn turn the buttons or the knob in the control room you you cannot feel the wind right the system have to deal with all this disturbance itself outdoor right so this is the purpose of control generally okay it's actually maybe more than that but I, uh, whatever i list there is just the maybe the the major one right so in application wise, okay, as you can see here, just a bit of history, it has been, uh, it has been there, okay, since uh, ancient Greece time, okay, where humans have been very intelligent to form a kind of automations, okay, the water flood regulation. This is what. Uh, the easiest one as you can uh, see in most of the uh, 
uh, toilet basins, okay, the yeah, toilet uh, storage, okay, where you have a float level regulations, right? So very simple mechanisms, mechanically, right? You can see that it is mechanical system uh, at the beginning, okay? There is a water clock, okay, automatic oil lamps and so on, okay? Then slowly, uh, when electrical controls uh, comes into picture, okay? When there is electrical uh, signal, then we have this kind of uh, temperature control. Then slowly also we, we have, uh, yeah, again, uh, another type of uh, important mechanical system, uh, a governor to control the speeds, okay? And nowadays we are at the stage of uh, modern control Right, where it's not main, it's not purely mechanical now, okay, or purely electrical. It's it's a mixture of different form of inputs, different form of feedback, as well as different form of uh, process, right? So this is where we we should learn just a basic uh, theory in that govern the control uh, systems. Okay, here are a list of uh, applications that I have listed, uh, I think, two years back, right? Just a quick ideas, okay? It can be used in control, quality control, okay? For example, so you may want to adjust uh, maybe a certain dimensions of a product, okay? So the product itself, if it may be uh, being controlled by a sensor, Okay, where it will always uh, detect the, the maybe the thickness of a product, right? So that particular thickness, okay, when whenever a sensor detect it, then how the process will you uh, respond, okay, to control that that thickness is important. Okay, this is where the the control the control theory may may be applied. Right. So others include assembly lines, control of machine tools, space technologies, and other things. Okay. So ideally, whatever you see nowadays, okay, it can be very simple. Okay. You just go to workshop. Okay. You have a late machine. You just press a button, then the motor start to turn. Right. Then you can control the speed of the late machines and so on. Okay. So what? are behind it okay it can be in the form of very simple electrical control uh electrical board okay to control all these things okay when nowadays slowly uh we shift to maybe electronic okay and this electronic when it's being connected to the internet then it becomes the iot right so this is where the you can see it's, it's somehow related okay uh from mechanical forms to electrical electronics as well as the internet form okay the machine may not be changed may not change much okay the process may not change much but the new items that you input into it okay to to ease the yeah the the humans and so on is is keep changing right that's why nowadays with the internet, we can have online classes, okay? So even all this uh, signal being transmitted, okay? It may not in the form of mechanical, okay? Now, okay? All this signal being transmitted uh, through the hub servers, okay? From your home, my home, universities to, to a central hub through fibers, all this may take times, okay? Even though we may say at the the speed of light right because it is a uh, uh, light okay through the fiber okay but all this has been has to be controlled okay how it is being changed okay how much time it being respond when you press a, a, a certain key in your in your computer or your computer send a signal right so all these are related to the control right but our focus would be on uh, object okay or machines okay and we going to control it right that is our uh, purpose for this course Right, so I may not uh, describe further on this. Okay, so please take your attendance. Okay, as you can see, attendance is mandatory, and all the attendance would be uh, taken through the e attendance. Okay, so those who have attend or, or admit to the class earlier, you may see the the QR code. Okay, if you miss out that one, never mind. Okay, you can get the 
the attendance link as well. Okay, you can log, you can take the attendance through the attendance link as well, available through uh, the chat box probably, or maybe uh, if you miss up as well, you can through, go through the Google Classroom, right? So I've posted the plus uh, attendance as well as the notes over there, right? So as you know, uh, we have to uh, brief this, okay, as part of our so-called uh, OBE, okay, the outcome-based uh, education has been widely used for, uh, well, for the whole world actually, okay. So this is where we are, we have to keep uh, updated, okay, and also. Uh, change our model of uh, education okay to output based okay outcome based uh, learning okay OBE or outcome based learning okay so what it means by outcome based is that we have a set of uh, outcome that we we plan for you okay as a learners okay as students okay and we would like you to achieve this outcome at the end okay not not simply the A or B, okay? That would be a cumulative of all these outcomes, okay? But what we would like you to actually uh, gain is not the grade itself, okay? But the knowledge behind it, okay? That's why where we always come, I think most of the lecture that you you go through on the first uh, lecture, they will tell you the, the cost for the program outcome mapping, right? So this is where you can see uh, a general uh, mapping of this course, okay, you have six uh, course outcome uh, to be achieved, okay, so all this will be actually uh, measured through maybe tests, assignments, and so on, okay, on your ability to maybe apply, for example, uh, course outcome number one, apply uh, or model a system into block diagram and transfer functions. Okay, so if you can do that, then yeah, through your tests, assignments, and so on, so marks will be given, and from there, we will know that you're actually uh, able to do it, okay? So that is how we, we actually uh, relate all these things with the, with the course outcome, okay? So from there, uh, again, this is uh, uh, a contrib it, it will be contribute to your program outcome again so this would be your po1 po2 po3 and po4 okay where this course would be related to okay from the knowledge itself okay from simplifications transfer functions which may be related to some uh, uh, differential equations on the laplace transform side okay then some form of uh, graphical analysis okay graphical how you read the the graph and so on to analyze a transient response Okay, so from there, that is the knowledge of uh, mathematics. Okay, so from there onwards, we will also apply a kind of technique what that we call as root lockers, very similar to mathematics. Okay, but then from the root lockers itself, we can actually evaluate the stability of the system. Okay, so meaning to say this is part of the, uh, we try to analyze a, a problem. Okay, so that would be related to PO2. Okay, then also you have a, uh, you will be taught on how to draw a board diagram, okay, what is it, okay, later on, okay, and how to evaluate the board diagram, okay, to, in order for you to, to achieve a certain design characteristic of the control, right, so that would be the investigation, we will try, try to investigate, okay, a uh, uh, problem, so you may have a problem, you investigate what is, what are the parameters to be inserted, okay, to form this uh, board diagram and other techniques, right? So that would be PO4, then, yeah, then only then we will come back to the uh, PO3, okay, which is the design part, okay? You will have to design a compensator, okay, which you will, I will briefly uh, show you a video on this, okay, to what, what it means by compensator, right? And the last one would be able to yeah, just a simple one. Explain control system using the technical te uh, terminology. What then? Sometimes people will say uh, thermistor, okay, or maybe a temperature sensor, okay. So all this you just use a terms called feedback, okay, feedback sensors and so on. So this is what how you you are able to explain a control system through technical uh, terminologies, right?
Okay, next would be on the yeah, reference. Okay, so uh, you can see the list of reference over here. You may get this reference in the library. Okay, if you can't get it, then maybe you see uh, whether you can obtain it uh, elsewhere. Okay, not the necessary library. You can get it from bookstore. Okay, or other other places. Okay, or maybe you can just rely on the lecture notes. Okay, so all these lecture notes will be posted. Okay, if you have taken this course before, then yeah, you, I guess you may have uh, the the lecture notes as well. Okay, so for for the first timer, don't worry, it will be posted uh, from time to time. But uh, all this slide, I usually will have some slight updates. Okay, on the content and so on. Okay, based on uh, my my teaching okay throughout every semester i will just think uh, what can be improved what can maybe too long too short and so on so i will make some tuning on on the slides okay that is the, the only difference or changes right so this is the mark distributions for this course okay quiz would be five percent test would be thirty percent then the test would be consists of two tests okay so basically it's uh 15% per, per test, okay, then you will have a, a group assignments, okay, followed by a final exam, right? So for the group assignments, okay, for the group assignments, uh, what I plan for this semester would be, uh, I will post the, the tasks, okay, from time to time, okay, so you may have a, a due date, right? But that due date doesn't mean you have to submit to me, okay, that due date represent what I expect you to, to have completed because uh, I will uh, continue to post the next task and so on, okay? You may only need to submit it by the end of the assignment, right? So I will keep posting uh, the task for you to, to complete, right? So that uh, at the end, you may able to form, uh, yeah, you may able to apply all the, the, the things, okay? throughout the the course right okay so this is the course structures okay i would first uh, introduce you okay for for today's okay so hopefully after today's you may able to at least uh use some of the technical terms right okay related to the control then from there onwards i, I will brief you on the modeling itself okay what is transfer functions, block diagram, and how you can model them, okay, from a physical or mechanical system, right? Then from there, we will start to analyze for the time response, okay, how, how it responds through the times, okay? When you give a certain input, how it will respond, how fast it will respond, and so on, okay? At the same time, we will also uh, analyze whether the system is stable or not, okay? Uh, yeah, whether the system will sta is stable or not, and whether there is a uh, error or not, right? So after understanding all these basic concept, then we will start to introduce, uh, go through certain technique. Okay, only two techniques will be taught in these courses. Okay, there are more than that actually, but uh, these are the maybe the 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 fundamental techniques. Okay, for for a beginner to to learn, right? So you have a root locus techniques and the plot diagram technique, right? So from this technique itself, we can use it for to analyze uh and to design. Okay, so this is where you will come to the end of the courses. Okay, where you you do a simple compensator design, right? This compensator me means a a system or the controller. Okay, a controller that will do a compensate a compensation. Compensation means if uh, you do not meet a you yeah, maybe I will later uh, explain what is the compensator, right? So the software involved probably uh, not not really on the Microsoft Excel, but Microsoft Excel will may just helps you to do some maybe uh, Finding what is the roots, okay, for a, a long equations. Maybe you have a, a an equations, a polynomial equation with a power of three, power with a root of three, root of four, okay. If you want to get the what is the roots, then you may need some software, okay, instead of using hand calculations, right? So then, other than that, uh, we will try to use uh, some additional software, okay, MATLAB. 
or silent, right? So in the last semester, last years, okay, two years, yeah, two semester back, okay, I have uh, taught the classes on using Scilab, right? Scilab to to run, yeah, to run a little bit of uh, simulations, okay? But you can, you, you are feel free to use MATLAB, okay? Because MATLAB and Scilab are, how should I say, very close, okay? Very close in terms of interface and so on, okay? The only difference is that MATLAB require license, okay? Scilab is actually open source, okay? Open source is free, so you can download, and that's why I'm using Scilab at, in, in my computer, okay? If you would like to use MATLAB, okay? Uh, actually, you can just use it using uh, the smart, that's the MIDI, 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 I, uh, website of UMS, okay, inside the, the remote or the virtual, virtual desktop info, interface, okay, VDI, okay, you have a, a range of software, okay, available for you, and one of it is good, uh, is MATLAB, okay, meaning to say you remotely enter to the in virtual interface, and you are using the MATLAB over there, okay, that MATLAB actually being has been installed in UMS server, right? That is how it operates. But if it may take you, you you must have a proper internet connections all the time, right? So that's why uh, if that would be not that that is not the case, then I would suggest you to just use a Scilab, lah, okay? Because you can install it uh, directly in your in your laptop or yeah pc okay and use it okay in, maybe in terms of uh the user friendliness may not be as par as matlab right but it's good enough okay to do most of the things right okay so here are some of the definitions and terminologies that uh we have to first uh understand okay on yeah to understand okay so that uh we don't have a misconceptions, okay, when we go through these uh, courses, okay? The first one would be the control variables, okay? It refers to the quantity or conditions that is measured or controlled, okay? The one that you would like to control, okay? The second one would be the manipulated variables, okay? Which is uh, the one that being respond to the control one, okay? The quantity or condition that varies by the controller, Okay, to affect the values or the con of the control variables, right? So the, the one that is being uh, responded or manipulated, right? The third one would be the terms called control. Control is the referring to the to the ideas, okay, of measuring the values of the control variables and apply the manipulated variables to the system to correct or limit the deviations of the uh, measured value okay so you can see that in in a simpler ideas okay you at the beginning i have shown you this uh, simple block diagram of input process and output right so what it means by the manipulated variables is that you first you set your desired variable okay a, te a certain temperature Okay, you set your your aircon in your room. Okay, twenty four degree Celsius. Okay, that is your the user control variable, right? That is the desired what. Okay, but internally, what the your aircon will do is that it will start to manipulate the current. Okay, that would be the manipulate variable to tune the current such that it achieve twenty four degree Celsius for you. Okay, so that is the the things and the control is related to these two parameters okay you have the control and how the the control actually manipulate or apply this okay to correct okay uh, the measured value to a desired value right so when we combine all these things we call that as a combinations of components that act together as a system right to in order to achieve the the objective okay the objective would be your desired temperature right or constant temperature okay so as a whole itself okay system is general for things that related to control okay meaning to say we don't care uh 
how the aircon actually functions. Okay, as long as we can interconnect them together as a as a control block diagram later on. Okay, then you form a, a system configuration that would able to be controlled. Right. So that's why when as a mechanical engineers, especially when you are the, let's say you are designing a con system, okay, through heat heat transfers, uh, thermodynamics concept, okay. But for a control engineer or for an electrical or electronic engineer, they, they do not have this much of knowledge to understand how all these uh airflow speeds and other things would, would control, okay, or to to respond to to the things right so what they they need to know is only what are the control variable what would what can be manipulated okay in order to achieve that one okay so this is where the communication start right so you just tell them you don't tell them there is fin there are all these things okay you only tell them uh in order to increase the 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 temperature okay let's say 24 to 25 just to increase you just say maybe you can reduce the flow okay how to reduce the flow you can control the waff okay the waff of the of the uh, refrigerants right so that is where the control start okay so for them they only need to know how to control the waff that's it okay they don't need to know the whole process okay then if another one would be if you want to make the room cool faster, then what can we do? Okay, then you have to tell them what are the, the so called manipulated variable that can be uh, adjusted, maybe increase the, the pumping, okay, means you have a pump at the compressor side, okay, pump faster, okay, then internally in the, in the air cons, you, you would also have a fan, okay, spin faster, right? So these are the motors. So for the control engineers, Meaning to say, you have to tell them, you just have motor A and pump A, all right? Increase both together, then you may able to achieve that, right? So then this is where the uh, analysis of the control system will take place, right? Other things would be the plants, okay? So plants may be probably uh, referring to uh, uh, equipments or parts of machines, all right? So you need to say that could be your air con, okay? That is, uh, you can see directly maybe from your home, okay, or maybe a, a, a fan, okay, a stand, a stand fan, okay, which is next to me now, right? A stand fan, okay, when you press a button, okay, then what, what is changing? The motor spin faster, right? So for the electronic or the electrical part, how to increase the, the motor speed, increase the current, or maybe, yeah. So that is where the communication start, right? Then if it is not about an equipment, then it can be also as a process. Okay? Process can be in the manufacturing plants where you would like to control, how should I say, maybe not, not the mechanical, not really a mechanical part, but then uh, a mix, maybe a mixing of uh, chemicals. Okay, it can be, it will become a process. Okay. So why mixing mixing is a process because yeah you basically yeah it depends on how you would define it okay the plant itself you do the process okay and the process can be as a mixing of fluids and other things okay in this course the process would be referring to any operations that uh, you need to control right so operations to be controlled Okay. Next terms would be the disturbance. Okay, the terms that I have used uh, since the beginning of the classes, uh, this class, all right, which referring to a signal that tend to affect the value of the output. Okay, so it can be in the form of uh, wind blowing. Okay, or outside ambient temperature is cold. All right, so all this would be the disturbance. Okay. Then the feedback control would be referring to an operations that uh, taken place okay, in order to reduce the difference between the input and the output. Okay. So this is a general control system, okay, where you have several parts of all, yeah, or component, and we I would call this as a block diagram, right? So this block diagram have 
two characteristics okay i would say you have arrows okay and block okay we should say it as a block diagram so we would represent or simplify the whole process or system that you intend to control into just a diagram right so that the engineers will start to understand okay and how to how to can see the whole picture okay where you can start to put uh, control into it right so in the general control system may consist of controller actuator process okay in between there is a disturbance okay then come back there is a, a sensors okay so here is the input here is your desired output okay and here is the feedback signal right so since we are drawing in a in a block diagram so we would say all this as a signal okay so you your mind have to slowly now tuning into just block you don't see any machines exist okay only blocks with a name called controller actuator process right so what it means by this controller actuator and process would be uh yeah the process is maybe a cooling process okay the cooling process or heating process okay you may have a, a oven or heater right so that would be the, the heating process so in during the heating you may have outside a uh, temperature that uh, affect the the heating so that would be disturbance okay then actuator would be the one that convert the control system into power meaning to say if in if you would like to do a heating okay what you need is the heater so this actuator basically is a heater okay or maybe a uh uh blower okay so why is blower because in a big factory they may have a, a heating power plant okay meaning to say they have already a steam okay being produced at the high pressure okay so what you need to do is only to divert that that pressure fluids into your system to do the heating okay so that would be a, a kind of actuators so it depends not necessarily limited to a heater right it can be in the form of fluid already a steam okay from from somewhere else in being injected to your system to increase the heating right so that would be your actuator a valve right then in order to control all this okay we need the controller so this controller basically is the one that do the the work to for you okay so if you said you would like the heating at 500 degrees celsius so the control board will start to check okay what is the current temperature okay if the oven temperature is only 100 what what they need to do is they will increase the signal okay through the controller to increase the maybe the insertion of steams okay or increase the current of the heater okay in order to achieve that 400 okay so when it reach 400 then the controller may say stop okay stop okay so this is what the controller will do and this controller at certain point later on okay you will say uh i i have mentioned that uh, we have what we call compensator design right so this controller basically at the end would be your compensator compensator means uh, you will do a compensate okay if the difference between input and output is large okay then this controller or compensator will do compensate more okay so that it it reduce the gap between them right so in other terms they may call it as a as a compensator right so generally in modern uh, control we rely on mostly on the feedback control system we need a sensor okay instead of uh instead of the non-sensor one right so if you have a standing fan the standing fan is an open loop control system okay what it means by open loop okay is that you only press a button okay to tell the stand fan to rotate okay and the stand fan will ne never know whether you feel cold or you feel hot or whatever it is okay you only tell them i press the speed number one it will start to ro rotate at that speed that's it okay that is the open loop control system 
right? So you only have input and your output is very straightforward. The motor of the standing fan rotates at certain speed. That's it, okay? So if the, the, stand, the stand fan motor now, if you put certain, uh, accidentally put a pan or, uh, or steel roller, okay? Inside it, okay, and it it stop or block the the blades of the standing fan. Okay, the stand fan will will not care, right? Because it doesn't have a sensors to tell it that something is blocking it, right? So it will still keep rotating at its capacity of the motor, right? That is the what we call as open loop control system. Okay, you just have to tell the input, then what the controller will do is just this is the signal that you need to achieve the 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 speed that's it okay so you will if you keep going maybe if you have others uh, blocking uh, like i say uh, a pen or whatever maybe uh, opposite wind blowing it okay it may not uh, care much okay as long as it will provide you with the so-called current to rotate to achieve this, that uh, rotations of the motor, right? So it's open loop, okay? But then if you would like to so-called make an intelligent stand fan, right? So you may want to now start to tell, okay, put, you may put a temperature sensor near the uh, input, means the back of the stand fan, and then one maybe at the front of the blade, right? So that you, may, you will know what is the temperature before and after okay the plate okay so from there you may start to put some intelligence let's say you may you may know that you would like to reduce the temperature from from 20 25 to 27 right okay you you may have sorry 27 to 25 okay you may want to reduce two degrees celsius by by blowing right so what the this uh, closed loop system control system will do is that still sa same stand fan okay the only difference is that they so they have a so-called intelligence to detect the temperature difference before the blade and after the blade and then based on that feedback if you your input is maybe two degree difference so the stand fan will start to to rotate okay maybe if the temperature difference is very large, then it will keep rotating faster and faster, okay? Until the threshold of two degrees Celsius, then it will start to slow. If it reach two degrees Celsius difference, then it will stop to rotate. So this is where the control loop system works, right? Okay, so the advantages or the, the yeah, I would say the comparison between the closed loop and the open loop control uh, would be like this, okay? The closed loop will have a greater accuracy, as you know, because we measure it, right? For sure. Then they are less sensitive to noise because, again, you measure it input and output, okay? So you adjust it accordingly, right? Then also the transient response and statistic error can be controlled more conveniently, okay? And this uh, you will understand better as this course progress, right? How, what is the response and statistic? Okay, and finally, the redesigns uh, here, okay? Redesign, the word redesign over here, okay? Of the controller is basically referring to compensate, compensations or compensator, right? So this is where the terms compensators come into picture. And yeah, this is how it works, okay? So you have a simpler block diagram, open, open loop uh, control, right? Of a turntable, right? So turntable, you just keep rotating, that's it, okay? Very straightforward, one-way uh, block diagram, okay? For a closed-loop uh, control uh, system for to control the speed of the turntable, so the model would be you add a, a tachometer, okay? Tachometer at the end to know what is the speed, right? So that when the speed is slower than desired or maybe you have certain very heavy object, okay, you put on the turntable, so it rotates slower now, right? So the battery will supply more current, okay, so that it increase, okay, to maintain the, the certain uh, 
desire speed over there, right? So probably uh, I will show you a, a PID control okay, from YouTube, right? So I'll share that first. Let's watch together. So what is a PID controller? It is an acronym that stands for Proportional Integral Der Derivative. If you need to keep something constant, like a temperature for example, then this is the way to do it. Essentially, it uses a control loop feedback to ensure the output wanted is what you will get. Simply, you put a setting in the controller and it will keep the output constant based on feedback from some input, typically some kind of sensor. Something you probably encounter every day that is essentially PID control is your cruise control in your vehicle. First, you get to the speed that you want to be going. Then you set your cruise control. The cruise control sends output signals to your throttle to regulate the speed. A speed sensor provides your control loop feedback to tell the cruise if the car should speed up or slow down, or how much more or less throttle to provide. A common standalone type that we use in manufacturing and industry is a temperature controller PID. These controllers are pretty simple to use and set up. Plus, they do a great job at controlling temperatures of a variety of equipment. Let's take a look at how they work. For our example, we will look at a PID controller that controls the temperature of heat tracing on process piping. First, we need to enter a set point, 200 degrees Fahrenheit for our example. Now, the controller will give a signal to the output to start heating up the heat tracing. The control loop feedback is in the form of a thermocouple to read the temperature. For our example, the PID controller can work as an on-off control for the heat tracing. Along with the set point of 200 degrees, we will set the controller at a couple of degrees above and below 200 as well. When the thermocouple reads 202 degrees, it will turn the heat tracing off. When it reads 198, it will turn it back on. This is the simplest form of PID control. We also have the option of setting up a PID controller with a PLC. Instead of the standalone unit, we can use the input and output cards already on our PLC. The process variable, or control loop feedback, would be wired to our input card and programmed into the PID. Our output being controlled is wired to our output card. The PID and the PLC can do all of the math and make the decisions based on the variables and set points. No matter which way you decide to set it up, a PID is an excellent choice for an automated process. Let's look back at today's information. A PID controller is a proportional integral derivative controller. It can keep an automated process, like temperature, pressure, or flow, constant for you automatically. PIDs use a control loop feedback, or process variable, to monitor where the output should be. These usually come in the form of sensors and meters. PIDs come in many different forms, including standalone units and PLC programming. 
We can use our input and output cards along with programming software to set up a PID. I hope this video really helped you get a grasp of how. Okay, so that is the, the concepts behind uh, the industrial control. So in for the industry, most of them, they still rely on the PLC, okay? Or the PLC basically is a programmable logic controller or in our new terms nowadays, what we understand is, uh, I, I would say uh, the computer, right? So it's, it's an industrial type of computer where you may connect to a, a screen, but then the computer is not in the form of a direct in direct installation of software and and other things, but in in this form of uh, PLC programming, right? So you may insert instructions over there through all these things, okay? But they have a simpler simpler uh, PLC, okay? As you have mentioned, you have seen from the from the videos itself okay they have a temperature control pid right pid controller okay where you just set the certain temperature so internally actually they already have the mathematics control logics behind it okay there is where you would have to set the proportional the gain the p itself the integral the i itself and the d the derivative uh, constant okay which you will learn in this course, okay, towards the end of this course, where you learn how to design a compensator, okay, that would be a type of a PID compensator, which inter integrate all these three components, right? How you you can identify the good uh, constant to be used or to be inserted in the in the PLC, right? So this is our main uh, main objective of this whole course right so i guess uh this example one and two basically uh, uh very classical i would say it's extracted from from the books okay uh the textbook uh from professor nice all right so basically it's it's just an examples of what you have seen in the videos already okay you have a furnace okay and you have a, a thermistor or a temperature sensors okay to convert all these things and re and being controlled by by uh here they put uh, a pc right but in real case you may also use as you see the plc or uh, pid controller just a, a simple block of it right to to control all these things okay so the the controller part is i would say is the possibility is infinite okay you can use pc you can use laptop if you can op turn it on 24 hours operating for 365 days a year in the factory right otherwise then they may opt for plc a simpler one that which is quite reliable downtime is very low okay only things you need to take care is to make sure that it's not overheating okay that's it right then uh yeah you nowadays you can also connect to internet smartphone or whatever it is to 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 do all this uh, fantastic stuff right so i would not go through on the examples directly itself right so generally for a control system design process itself you have a, a set of, uh, of things to do right so the first thing is to establish the control goal so this is just like uh, any uh, works okay that you will encounter okay since this is the third year you may have idp design project and other things okay fyp and so on right so this is the the things that you may need to to do okay the goal right so for control engineering for sure the the goal would be the control goal right so what is your ultimate uh, needs okay to do all this design okay whether you want to control a constant temperature or control a constant uh, speed, right? So that would be your control goal, okay? So you have to know what is needed, okay? So from there only you start slowly identify what are the variables to control, okay? If you want to control the speed, then what are the variables? Is it the current of the motor 
or the voltage of the motor and so on right so from there only you start to write the specification of the wearable okay the specification would be the 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 starting of the modeling which you will learn later on okay you start to form them into a, a block diagram and then you start to model them okay because all these motor have their own characteristics okay you give a certain power to this motor then it will rotate a certain characteristic okay and this is where the specification of the variable is required okay so that we can know or predict what is the response okay when you insert uh 12 volt okay uh 5 m okay to a very simple dc motor how it will respond okay so we would like to know all these specifications so that we can simulate and control better right so from there you will start to establish the system configurations okay then model the process okay this would be the, the starting of the block diagram analysis and so on describe the controller and the key parameter to be adjust okay and finally optimize the parameters okay so this can be a simpler simple one okay or it can be as complex like uh, as you have seen you would like a, a pid control okay what are the parameters to be optimized okay and for our course okay we will remain uh, make it as simple as possible just because this is a beginner uh, courses okay meaning to say most of the time the control goal or the variable to control usually is only one okay you may just want to control a certain motor one motor okay but in real okay it can be a combination of where three or four parameters coming together okay Inter integrate together and that is where the software will play a greater role okay to help you to simulate all these things okay but the fundamental if it is strong enough then it can be easily expand okay through the the simulation of the software okay using matlab or scilab okay in as the combinations of the of the simulator simulings okay or x course in the scilab right so this is again the general steps uh, taken from the textbook itself okay general very similar to the previous one right so i will not go through in details on those things right so only diff uh, things i would like to highlight here is the to satisfy all the performance specifications okay normally uh, educated try and error error are, are used okay so meaning to say normally an engineer will start after long years of experience they may start to know okay let's try this value first okay so from this value then they will start to improve okay to optimize all those parameters all right because some of the of the of the just like a numerical methods okay remember control is actually very similar to numerical methods because the maths concept okay you will have to start with a guess value okay then you start to iterate okay and from the iterations you will achieve a convergence to your desired values okay or desired output okay because in engineering many things are unknown okay this is where your starting guess may be important right to minimize the try and error or repetitions of the of the optimization process or the design process right so in terms of analysis and design objective it will be discussed uh, in detail further in the respective chapter especially on maybe uh, uh, certain machines you may want to have achieve a transient response okay meaning to say uh, how fast it would uh, achieve all right or maybe another another characteristic you may want to highlight would be the steady state response okay how fast you reach the steady state uh, characteristic or the third one would be the stability okay so stability basically referring to the fluctuations right so in in a simpler forms you will see this uh, yeah this terms right? where you will see the the transient response over here okay how fast is actually uh is actually being uh how should I say? Uh, uh, being responding, okay, to what we want, okay. So from from the time you you insert the 
the signal okay how fast it will respond okay whether it is a straight line or whatever it is okay then there will be a steady state response okay how fast it will achieve a steady state and after the steady state then you will see that there is a steady state error okay after it's steady but what you want may be four but what you achieve is maybe 3.8 okay whether it's acceptable or not right so all this we will have a uh the comparisons or parameters that you may need to take care okay later on right so this is a two measure of the performance the transient response and the steady state error okay so as part of the first the, the assignment itself the, the assignment part one right so what i have here is a quick uh one right so what you need to do is just to watch this youtube Right, so this YouTube link is basically on the PID control of robot gripper, okay, using MATLAB slash simulink, right? So it will immediately give you an idea of what can can be done, okay, okay, to control certain things, all right? So you will see this uh, grapper examples you on YouTube, okay? You form a, a group, okay, and you may sit down and discuss, okay, on the in the on the youtube itself okay just make a simple uh descriptions all right on the objective of the control system okay so inside this video they he may tells you about the control uh, of the opening and closing of the of the gripper right so here what you need to do is you identify one of it okay that you would like to take as your as your work later on right because uh, as i told you this assignment will be continuously uh, being added with tasks right so from there this videos will give you an idea what can be done first okay so from this video right you identify one objective that you would like to control okay then from that objective, you identify what are the components, okay? And maybe you can start to sketch, okay? The block diagram and explain it, okay? In a word form, right? Just put into a report form and yeah, put into a report form, right? So as I say, you don't have to submit, but make sure you do it, okay? Because as time goes by, okay? You have more and more tasks together then you may not have much time, right? So this would be like a logbook, all right? So you just do this task first, okay? So in these two weeks, you have discussed, watch this video, this objective, this components, okay? Record it in written form, okay? You type it or, or whatever it is, it's okay. okay? But once you, you have done that, okay? Keep it, right? And then wait for the second part, right? Second part will tell you how you use all this information now and do the next task onwards right so i guess that's all for today's right so any questions i hope it is clear for you any questions from all of you okay all right so all is good okay so if no, then we will end our lecture here today as uh, I guess you already know most of the online classes uh, time would be shortened instead of maybe two hours usually we will do it in one or one and a half hours okay? because of the yeah, too long on online may not uh, the attention is not there and, and also at the same time basically you can always have the recording to refer back right but then for normal lecture, you don't have those, those recordings. That's why uh, more time is needed to actually to emphasize certain concepts for at there. Okay. But online you can always repeat the recordings. Okay. That's why usually the online classes would be conducted as recommended by the minister ministries, okay, as well as UMS. Okay. Do not uh Try not to use the full two hours or three hours of lecture, right? So if no questions, we will end this, okay? And for tomorrow's sessions, okay? Even though in the lectures, it 
it's uh, noted that that is a tutorial classes okay but then uh, for your informations uh, most of the schedule okay that we have uh, put on the on the on the the BPA website basically that is not the real tutorial okay tutorial may mostly uh, are catered more on the maths courses okay maths courses where you need the the guidance of uh, uh, let's say, uh, guidance of yeah doing maths or steps and other things okay so for other courses non maths courses okay basically that tutorial class slot that have been allocated uh, basically we are not we are not using that as a tutorial we still use that as a lecture right so meaning to say three credit hours you may expect around three three hours of lecture per week in face to face but online probably one one and a half hours to two hours okay, per week right so the remaining time you can always re reread or rewatch the video okay to refresh it back right so that is the the definition of tutorial where you see there is tutorial you expect is a tutorial class right so basically it's, it's still a lecture class for for control engineering right i pray i think probably other other lectures the other courses they also treat that as a as a lecture instead of uh, the real tutorial right for tutorials uh i would run like not a tutorial for this courses okay on but more on the discussions of some of the example of the questions right instead of a, a tutorial right so tutorial more on the practice of the math system right so i hope that would be clear for you and see you again next thursday all right okay bye bye okay doctor thank you thank, thank you, you doctor bye. thank you doctor Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Stay safe. Thank you, Doctor.